and Jim Dressel is hoping that helps them get back on the same page. In the meantime, last year the Hoosiers and Hawkeyes combined for 78 points to get you back out to Iowa City. Right? That's something I think that surprised many uh, by saying if IU wants to make a decision where you're no longer their football coach, sure. you would just walk away without any kind of payout. Uh, well, I, that, reiterate that and tell me what you're thinking. Well, I, you know, don't get the walk away part, you know, I, and I guess that's not really the point I was trying to make. The, the point was if, if the people here feel that there's someone else that can do a better job, I just want everybody to know that Indiana University does not owe me a penny. I've got three years left on my contract, you know. So again, I'm not walking away from the job, no. okay? But I, I do want to make it clear that, that, you know, when I made a decision to come to Indiana University in 1979, um, I can't, I just can't express to you what this place has done for me. And, you know, they could have, you know, when I, I was hired at 35 years old to be a head coach, and you just don't get those kind of opportunities. And that's why I worked so hard, because, you know, Miles Brand could have hired anybody, and, and, he, and he hired me. And, and that's why I say if, if for some reason, the fact that I have three years left on my contract, you know, don't, don't, you, know, you don't need to keep me because you're worried about you can't afford somebody else. And that's why I said, you know, Indiana University, if, they, if they've got someone better in mind, they don't know, you know, they don't owe me a penny. I respect you for talking with me tonight, so I'm not going to dwell on this. I'm not going to harp away, but I do want to ask you a timetable. Do you think this is something this week you'll have a meeting or, or and they'll say, here's what's happening for the future of, of Cam Cameron or what, what do you what do you know and what do you think? I'm a, you know, I'm a Christian man. I have strong faith in God and and uh, I, I just, you know, I, I truly have been blessed with the ability to just get out of bed in the morning, go to work, and work my rear end off. And I've, I've just, I've always, I've always kind of been that way. And, and, I, and, and it's really, it's important that that rub off on the people here. And so, you know, I've got, as soon as we get done talking here, I've got 11 recruits at the Alumni Association that are here. And I, I won't be shocked if they all 11 commit. I got all their parents coming to my house tonight. And my wife's got, we have a reception tonight. I've got a brunch with them all tomorrow morning. I'm in a home visit tomorrow night. I'm in the state of, I'm in, I'm in at least 20 homes starting Monday night through Thursday. We've got 20 recruits coming in next Friday. And that's where I'm going. You know, I'm going to go recruit and I'm going to bring the best players I can to Indiana. That's my job. And then if someone gives me a phone call and says I need to come back for a discussion, I'll be back. I'm not going to stay. I'm not going to stay away. I'll promise you that. But life's too short. Uh, I love what I'm doing. I have a lot of confidence in my ability to do what I what I do as as a head coach. I'm over the hump as a head coach. I really believe that. Um, uh, I think our team is over the hump. But you know, I'm just I'm gonna do what I'm asked to do. And right now, I'm still the head football coach in the end. It sounds like the relationship with the players is a pretty obvious answer. That's what you cherish the most? A absolutely. It's about the players. But I think, you know, Alex Agassi, I don't know if you guys remember Alex Agassi, um, the old coach at Purdue. He's one of my mentors. And, and of course, Bo Schembechler. And, and Alex, you know, he says, when you, when you become a head coach someday, he told me this when I was about 25. He said, don't ever sell your soul for winning. And I've been able to keep that in perspective. And... I'm, even though we've struggled, we've never come close to compromising ourselves or this university for the sake of winning. And it's, it's tempting. I mean, in college athletics, with the pressure we're under and, and those things, there's all sorts of things that, that go on, as, as you well know. And we never, we never wavered. We, we've got a solid plan, and uh, we've never sacrificed our integrity for winning. Some solid advice. He's a classy guy. Now, Will Hampton will have more from his interview with Cam Cameron coming up tomorrow on Sports Locker Sunday. Also, stay tuned because tonight, talk to John. To keep the coach or no, who's your basketball? Purdue, Notre Dame, Colts, Baltimore. Let's start with number 11. Who should be the Heisman winner there? Randall L., but won't be. I use Antoine Randall L. Heading to uh, Mr. Johnson for two of his TDs. 17 carries, 97 yards. And sometimes that gets a little dust on the kicks there. I have to wipe those off. The storyline versus Kentucky was, would Coach Cameron survive? Well, we'll know next week probably. But we know now that when these two get together, it's generally a brawl. IU seniors beat the Cats for the first time. And Randall L. leaves on the shoulders of teammates a 26-15 winner.
Um, it's my last game, and uh, I think the way I was carried off and everything, and, you know, you know chatted to by the fans and that kind of thing, I think that said a lot, and it meant a lot to me. If Indiana University does not want me to be their head coach, they do not owe me a penny. They do not owe me a penny. If the rationale is to keep me to save money, that is, that is not an issue. Indiana University has done more for me than I could ever do for Indiana University. Purdue and Notre Dame.